get on the mic. I finally got my voice back a little bit here. So, so let's get rolling. Needless to say, I want to show you what we got here. Everybody should have the trend box. Um, Gerald sent that out a couple days ago, and I'm going to go over some strategies we want to use with the trend box, and let's break this down um, exactly how to use the trend box and why is it why is it so important um, with the, our trading methodology. So make sure if you didn't receive it, I'm sure everybody did. Gerald said he sent out to the whole group of members. So you should have this in your mailbox. Let's look at the first two charts, Gerald. You just need to record the crude oil chart. I'm going to look at the S&P 500 because we have a lot of traders trading the S&P. Now um, we have traders that trade all kinds of futures, stocks, Forex, and so on. So I thought the S&P would be a good one to actually educate you on how to trade the trend box because this is universal. It, it works on all markets. It doesn't matter what futures it is. Um, and then um, it doesn't matter any type of futures, whether you trade gold, crude, S&P, NASDAQ, uh, Russell 2000. It really doesn't matter. Um, also, it works great in the Forex. Uh, also, any stock that you may do, even have traders looking at ETFs with it and so on. So. Um, the whole purpose of coming up with the trend box is this trend chart. This left chart, everybody knows I love this trend chart because a trend chart um, is a longer time frame Rinko bar. Now, uh, members know that my Rinko bars are kind of special because they have a lot of trend filters built into uh, the candles. So when you see a green candle, your bias is up. You see a red candle, your bias is pretty much down because I got trend filters working in the background. So what we're going to do, what I, I thought would help a lot of traders out is we have some traders that strictly trade off of this trend chart. And they will, they, they will just buy and sell off this trend chart where the MAs will cross down. They'll wait for the first retracement. And once you get that first red reversal bar at a full retracement below on this oscillator down here, then you'll look to short the market. So we have a lot of traders that love to trade that technique by doing that where you trade off a long, larger time frame. The problem with that is your stops are larger. Uh, well you, you, this is a nine sim Rinko. So a nine sim Rinko, your average stop is going to be right around 22 ticks off of a large time frame. I mean, it, it creates large opportunity, which some traders have the capability to do that, but your average trader, they want uh, much smaller stops. So what I've done is, is I've, come up with the trend box where we can actually get with the, the longer time frame, a longer Rinko trend and project it on smaller time frames. Now, how is that important? It's important because now the entry is going to not be not only be based on the larger time frame trend, it's also going to be based on the shorter Rinko bar entry and stop. And that cuts your stop literally right in half. So you go from a 22 tick stop on a larger time frame and this is a three sim Renko. This is a very small time frame, three sim Renko. So now you're running your entries off of a three sim Renko, a four or five. It's up to you which one you want to do. Um, a lot of traders, they, 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 they like the shorter time frame the most because your stops are between nine and 11 ticks. Now on a 12 sim, I mean a four sim Renko, you're right around 11, 12. You go up to a five sim Renko, you're right around at a 13 tick stop, two ticks above the swing high, swing low. But you're definitely not at a 22 tick stop. So this creates a lot of great opportunity for traders because you can keep a small stop and see a lot of reward, uh, high reward to risk trades because you're putting yourself in a position off of a larger time frame move on a retracement, but you're also putting yourself in a position entering off a small time frame chart. And let me show you how this works. So this indicator right here, uh, the trend box, these are all green boxes and red boxes. Let me show you how this works here, Let me, uh, just so you can understand and get a feel for how I programmed the indicator. This green bar right here, when it's a full retracement, we're at a full retracement. This is when I like to see the market pop. We're at a full retracement. We're right at 10%. So if we're at 10%, everybody knows that 10% or above 90%. I'm looking for the market to pop in the other direction, okay, with overall trend direction, okay? Uh, Larry, do the 9 sim and 3 and 5 sim have to be the same? Uh, indicated trend. You mean with moving averages, Larry? Are you talking about moving averages in the same direction? Is that what you're talking about? I think that's what you're getting at because the three sim is going to project the nine sim. Yes, yeah. It doesn't have to be. 
it doesn't have to be, but when they line up, those are typically your bigger moves. Correct. Yep. So you keep your MAs on the smaller time frame. Yep. So I want you to concentrate on this bar on the trend chart. So here we are over here in the trend chart. This bar right here that closed, that green reversal bar right there, that's a bullish candle. That is the same as this candle right here. I mean this a uh, box, this green box. That is an indication that we have a big up move coming right there. Because we are at a full retracement, I got the big green box. Because what this 3SIM is doing, it's looking at the 9SIM, the larger trend chart candle. It's looking at its trend. So my trend filter is working on this 9 Rinko bar, but it's projecting itself on the 3 sim or any lower time frame. I mean, you can use any lower time frame. If you don't want a lot of trades, you can actually look at a 5 sim Rinko instead of a 3 right here, you know, because this is a 3. So let me show you how important this is. Now I can trade. Now I have confidence knowing I'm with large time frame trend, macro point of view, but I can enter off of a smaller time frame with smaller stops and a higher reward. So how do we do it then? What's your most optimal time to look at the trade? All right. The best trades you're going to get is if your large time frame is fully retraced above 90 or below 10%. Those are your best time frame trades to, to pop in a smaller time frame entry. Because remember, these green boxes will not show up unless my large time frame has a green box. So this green box is big, thick green box. The large box are typical of, of, of reversals, by the way, and you're going to find that. You're going to find the large boxes are typical of reversals. So this at 10%, when that closed green, obviously this is the first green box. Now, how, how do we enter then? Let me break down the Russell, then I'll break down this trade since that's small. I want to keep this in a big perspective for you. Let's break down to Russell 2000 on this trend box, and let me show you a little bit how this works. All right, so right now you know that my 9-SIM Renko, my trend chart, is green because this is a 3-SIM Renko on the Russell 2000 today, 3-SIM Renko. I know that when these green boxes are printing that my larger time frame is trending up. It's got a bias up. It doesn't have a bias down. It has a bias up. Okay, so what I want to do is, is I want to look at if I'm trending up, and this is your point, Larry, you said, do we have to have both time frames moving averages in the right direction? If you're going to do that, since the Russell 2000, it was up at this time, there's your crossover. You want to look at the first full retracement, and your entry is going to be right here because you have the first green box that's printed. Now, here's what's very important. The green box has to print and stop ticking because what you're doing is you need to make sure that the projection you're getting on the smaller time frames has printed on the larger time frame. So this box has to stop printing and has to just start ticking on the next box. Then you can take, it took one, two, three boxes later, but you can take this retracement right here. So when it's red, 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 you'll take the first reversal bar or positive market delta. That's your entry because the positive market delta, your stop loss is two ticks below the swing low. Your second retracement entry is here. On your small time frame, you have to get at least below 10% above 90% no matter what because then we're fully retraced. So now we're below 10%. Red, 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 red. There's your uh, positive market delta was at this low. There's your entry. Stop loss, two ticks below the swing low. You see what I'm doing? I'm going with nine sim, uh, large time frame trend, but I'm entering off three sim. Look at this. This is a three sim Rinko. Very small time frame. So what I want to do is I want to put myself in a position to win on a smaller time frame. This does not make it. I need to get below 10%. Once you get below 10%, red, 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 here's another buy opportunity. You see what I'm trying to do? I'm trying to get the swings on a full retracement off of a small time frame with larger time frame trend. I'm still green. I'm still intact. Give me another one. So I'm giving plenty of opportunity here. There's another entry. 
full retracement down here. I'm trying to get full retracements with larger trend in place. Right there again, hit it. There's another one. So here's another buy point. Pause the market delta. You try to get it again. Full retracement. So you see what I'm trying to do. It's a great example right here on an uptrend. These are the opportunities on a smaller time frame. Now, if you don't want so many trade opportunities like this, remember, this is projecting the nine Rinko bar. This is projecting the nine Rinko bar. The nine sim Rinko bar on a three sim. If you want less trades, which I have traders that email me all the time, they like trading off the five. You get about two opportunities a morning. You know, this is a three. Just from this point, just in an hour of trading, you had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven opportunities. So here's what I like to do also. So that's that's breaking it down as far as, you know, for a buy side. If you're looking for a sell side, let's look for the sell side when we're in a sell move. Sell is the same thing. Sell, if you cross down on the trend chart, this would be your sell side. You'll see a big red box. You know, nine sims rolling over closes you want to try to get there short for retracement oops sorry here full retracement here full retracement right so on the sell side it looks just opposite you see a big giant red box that means nine sim is rolling over and that's what we try to do in there so let's put this all together then so now you know what the trend box does let's see if, if there was a red box in between those two trays, do you, do you reset and start again? Yes, you can. Yep. Yes, we want the reversal box to close before trading. Right, Dave. Yep. Yep. Now, what you can do is this, is you can, you can, um, so here's, here's, uh, here's the S&P today. So the S&P, <clears throat> your most optimal time is going to be when you get below on the trend chart, 90%, and above 90% are below, um, below 10% with the reversal bar, okay, with trend. That's your optimal time to get it. Here it got, it's starting to get ready for another big explosion to the upside right there. So now if you match these up, see these red bars up here? They match up exactly with, oops, on the small time frame. Let me get this off. Oh, sorry. So those red bars are the same as these red bars, okay? Here's your starting and uptrend again. There's your green bar reversal. We're in a major trend up. It's at the close, but you will look for another buy opportunity on that next leg up. So the best opportunity you're going to get to match these charts up is here. If I see this at 9.33 in the S&P this morning, 9.30, was it 9.33? If I blow this up, I know at 9.30, at 9.30 here, this big green bar was my first chance at a nice long right there. Why? Because my trend chart just did what? My trend chart reversed a big green bar right there in the S&P 500. So what do I want to do? I want to look for the first retracement off this 3SIM. This is a 3SIM Renko on the S&P. 3SIM, small time frame. It almost got it there, right? I got to get below 90% or above 90 or below 10%. Almost got it there. Here's the first time it got below. I want the first green bar reversal. Show me positive market delta. It nails the exact bar low right there. Your stop loss is two ticks below the swing high. The market's in a hard uptrend. So since we're in a hard uptrend, you have several opportunities on the S&P now because everything is in line. Got the big time frame in trending up. You got this time frame trending up. There's your full retracement. Red bar, red bar, red bar, pause the market delta, caught this exact bar low right there. Once again, you're below 10%. You know that's when you want to put yourself in the most optimal time for a high probability trade. There's your shot right there. So that's what you're trying to do. You're trying to put yourself in a position because watch this. Check this out. Let me skinny this down. On the large time frame, it never gave you one solid retracement all morning, did it? It happened at 9.30. That was it. But after that, from 9.30 to 
what, 2 o'clock, there's no deep retracement, was there? But there sure was right here on the smaller time frame with the overall large time frame trend. And that's what we're trying to accomplish. We're trying to set it up off of a larger time frame going into a smaller time frame. Let me answer some questions. Let's see. Uh, if there was a red box in between those two trades, yeah, I answered that. You can reset and start again. Yes, you can, Steve. Uh, if the market is moving sideways, do we just use market profile and, and use the boxes also? Yes, Ernie, great question. Let's look at a chart. So that's trend, right? The trend's easy. Today in the SP is trend. So this is a trend-looking chart. You know, this is the whole session. We're in a trend day. Trend up. Trend up all morning. Let's look at chop. Let's see if I can get chop here. Or range. If we trade range, Ernie had a great question. We were in a range range yesterday. We're in a range market says, so let me skin this down for the whole session. If we're in range, here's what you can do with the trend box. You can still use the trend boxes in range. This is the range we had yesterday. Very rangy yesterday. Here's your support and resistance pretty much all day. All right, so if you get a chop or range and you're not trending on your trend chart, you're just going horizontal, meaning your MAs are horizontal and it happens. You get about three trend days and two chop days during the week on average on any given market. So what you can do is, Ernie is saying, can you trade market profile? Yes, you can with the boxes. Yes, you can. Because what you can do, when you're, when you're, in, when you're on the outer range, because in a range market, the market likes to do what? It likes to go from HVA, you know, oops, let me put this as red, high value to low value. It likes to go back and forth on the first and second test. It goes in between profile, right? Well, if that's market profile, and we know the moving averages are sideways, then we can still trade. Even though we're not trending, we can still trade the boxes because we're using a small what? Small time frame. <clears throat> we're not using a larger time frame to pop in the trade for our entry and stop. If I'm here at a high value area and I roll back over, and I'm rolling back over, I got it. MA cross right there, I'm rolling back over. I want to look for the first full retracement and it catches it right there. My target is going to be the other side of market profile. There's your sell. If I come down here and hit high value, uh, low value area and I'm trending back up at cross right there, there's your first retracement. <coughs> then yes, that's what you can take. So you can actually take those if you're on the outer edges of market profile, what I would do, uh, Ernie, though, is I want to make sure that I'm on the outer edges of profile if I'm going to try to take trade trend boxes to get to the other side. And on trend days, it's quite simple. Trend days, and here's, what, here's a good look, too. This is what happens all the time with market profile when you break out. A lot of trades look like this. It will break out, the trend box being an uptrend. happens on the three sim a lot so let's say this is HVA you break out the trend box is still green it retest right on HVA you get a full retracement Ernie after you're in chop all day and this is typically the start back into trend right there so even when you're in chop it works quite well because once you get outside of chop if you're still trending up and your boxes are still in the direction of the trade you can take that first retracement and pop in and try to get that nice leg up because that's when a lot of wrongly positioned traders are getting caught that's when you get a lot of traders on the wrong side of the market covering their positions and you see fast speed okay very simple for that all right the key are is using the nine with the with the lower time frame that's what makes this work so well <clears throat> Let's see, putting the dots on the three, excuse it. I don't put this, I don't put the sim dots on the three, yeah. You can if you want. It doesn't mess it up though. I like them on the five only.
Yeah, Jules, uh, eight. You got it, buddy. All right, so now we know what we try to do is this. We try to watch for these two charts really work great together because the trend chart, <coughs> excuse me, if you get below 20%, I mean, um, if you get below 10% or above 90%, you get a possible trade, especially if it's with trend. But let's look at the, uh, let's look at gold. Gold had a lot of trades today with the trend box. Worked out quite well. Let's look at gold. If I'm, if I'm a gold trader, if I'm a gold trader, these are the two hot spots during the day with the trend chart. I mean, right here. That short on a larger time frame and this long. Those were two hot spots. Beautiful short at 11 because what happens when I get that smaller MA cross through, once I see that smaller MA cross through the intermediate MA, even though I've been trending up all morning, I look for what? I look for the green bar, then back to red bar. Green bar, catching the wrong position traders, back to red bar, and your trend box will pick it up. These are trend box shorts this morning that caught it perfectly. Trend box caught the high. Caught these moves. Adam, sorry, after they came up. Caught these moves here. Caught about four moves on the way down. This high. Caught that high. So use your large time frame to see what's the best optimal time to trade. Like if I'm in an uptrend, this is a scream and buy right here. I mean, check this out. That's a full retracement. And, and once it closes the red bar there, I'm looking for my sim, my sim box to pop in. Right here, too, I'm looking for the sim box to pop me in right there also. Right here. I want this to pop me in the trade. So that's another really good opportunity. You know, use this chart to set the trade up. But we use this chart, the smaller micro chart, for the entries because they're smaller, it's a much smaller time frame. This will set you up. Now, I have, I, I have traders ask me this all the time. If I use this chart, can I, should I only trade the setups when this gets a uh, larger time frame, gets above 90 with trend, meaning the small intermediate MA, you know, this is when you get these big trends, is do I just use this, the trend box on a smaller time frame when this gets above 90? You don't have to. What you have to do is, is you just want to make sure if you're trading off that smaller time frame, right, is that you have, yet you stay with the color of the box with the moving average trend. So in other words, this is a crossover. You know that this will be a nice possible buy. You know this is a nice possible buy. Your largest trades are going to be when they both line up, though. That's going to be your largest trade setups. Okay, because remember, this is reading the large time frame. So if I look technically at what happened today in crude, I mean in uh, the S&P since midnight, I had a small pullback, and there's a trend all the way from trend box all the way from 9:30, all the way to 11 uh, or 12, 12 o'clock. Then it had the pullback, and then the big green box, it was just ready for another resumption of trend box up. In other words, if you're trading the S&P and this is in the morning, you better look at me buying these, these lows right here again because she's ready for another leg up. <coughs> yes, it's the open and close of the candle. Yeah, thanks, Steve. Murph. Because remember, the trend, the trend candles have trend filters built into them already. It's, it's, not, it's not a standard candle. It's not a standard open, low, high, low, close um, candle. It's got a trend filter built into when these candles print. The key is for you guys is to make sure you let this print first. Let the box completely print. Then you look for the buy or sell. When it's printing, when it's active printing, if, you, if you're using the trend box, when it's active printing and you're looking for a reversal, don't try to time the reversal. The trend box gives you an opportunity on the next wave. That's what it's used for. Okay? 
Any questions? Very simple indicator. Everybody has it in their mailboxes now. You're good to go. The next step is we're getting the back testing software out to everybody. We want to get this out. Everybody should have it in their mailboxes. Questions? Anybody? Anybody? All right, I want to keep this short, guys and gals. We're at about 30 minutes. The whole basis of this, now we can see large Rinko bar trend on a small time frame. And when they line up, it's, it's pretty cool. I have been getting a lot, a lot of positive emails from members inside and outside the room. A lot of great feedback. A lot of great, great feedback. How, how it's been helping uh, traders avoid actually some of the uh, negative trades they used to have in the past. Yeah, if it has one offset color, a box, and a trend, wait for it to close green box back in the other trend and jump back on. It'll do that on the 5 sim, larger time frames once in a while. Jules, where you'll get a, a green box, and they'll go red, and they'll go back to green again. Just jump on the, uh, wait till it closes the next green so you know it's continuation of trend, and then look for the first retracement. Yeah, NASDAQ, there's a ton of trades on the NASDAQ. Holy joke. I'll bring it up for you, so. Any other questions? Yeah, you start all over. Make sure you print print green so you got the trend direction in your favor. You got it. And look for the first retracement. Oh, the arrows? Yeah, Larry, those are, um, the, you use that in conjunction with these retracements. If an arrow fires when you got a full retracement, it just gives you confluence. That's how that's used. Those arrows automatically come up automatic, uh, automated based upon um, a Fibonacci sequence. Use that for confluence. <laughs> 